Hi there YouTubers, um, I wanted to do a, a long term uh, review on one of my air rifles and I've seen a lot of these uh, air rifle reviews but there have been that's actually used them for some time. So here she is, this is what we're going to be doing a review on. This is the uh, Calibre Cricket and I have the 2.2 variant here. Um, these have been out now for about a year and a half maybe, a little bit longer. When the first review started coming out and um, I initially had a spring loader and I wanted my first pneumatic and uh, I plumped for one of these at about a thousand pound at the time just for the rifle. Um, obviously I've added in a tripod uh, on the bottom here, uh, nice and simple and a scope up the top here. Now I've got a quite a large scope up, up on here. Um, it's a 6 to 24 by 50 scope up the top here. I can't remember the exact make of it. Um, it's a uh, AGS 6-24-50 um, and you can see it's actually quite long there but this is uh, screws on and off uh, we've got a shield on there and pop up on there but this isn't a review about the scope at all uh, this is a review about the actual rifle itself so where do we start uh, so quite simply what we've got here is uh, we have a low for Walter uh, barrel on here um, it comes in 2-2 and it comes in 177 um, and its total weight minus the tripod and minus the scope is uh, 2.7 kilograms, so quite a light rifle and very nicely balanced. Even though I've actually got this all set with, uh, with the scope on the top and the tripod, it yeah, has nicely balanced around that around that midpoint. And uh, obviously, scopes are usually balanced quite well on the midpoint as well. So what we have got built into here, well, basically we have uh, a moderator that's uh, fitted straight over the top of the barrel. So we just take a we can just twist this off and we see that this just twists off and there's the barrel itself so the rest of that is the modulator in there so that's all quite nice and uh, the, re the report on the gun is actually very very good uh, very quiet great for uh, a back door uh, back uh, back guard and plinker um, with hardly too much noise on here we have uh, fill gauges in here so basically it's a standard fill just take a look at that and you just pop it in there Fill it up, and we have on the front there a uh, pressure bar on there, and we'll go through some filling in a bit, and so we'll fill it up. Um, take it through from that. The trigger, it's a nice two-stage trigger on there, very nice um, bladed trigger, uh, very nice, very good feel. Like I said, I've not had many rifles before, but compared to the usual uh, cheaper varieties, or Springers up to two, three hundred pounds, this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, trigger. I find this, and it's fully adjustable as well. Lee. <laughs> It doesn't come with this part, so if you do buy one of these, make sure you get the cheat guard. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic, um, very good. Otherwise, you you know you can see it's not exactly great. And obviously, with it being a ballpark, it's quite easy to get yourself a little caught in here, whisker hairs caught in here. So you'll find that most people who come with one of these will supply these with it. There's clips over the top and uh, sirens in the background, and as we can see, obviously it's a ballpark. So. What we'll do is we'll just take the magazine out. Yeah, so get this magazine out. We'll just put that down to one side. And we're empty at the moment. And that's the report on it. And again, so if we just cock, pop back, that's the report on it. That's nice and quiet. Okay, so it comes with usually comes with one or maybe two of these magazines and they're 14 shots magazines, um, solid metal construction, quite nice, quite easy to fill. Now a lot of people, long term review. To be honest, with the ball pop, you do get used to cocking it up to the top the side. Uh, when you're cocking it, you get used to that. But I have still not got used to this mechanism of loading the magazine. You cannot load it one handed, I'll tell you that now. No matter how much you try, it's just not possible to do it. And it is a pain in the backside, to be honest. So find myself when I'm trying to load this magazine. It's just the way that it's done. We have a little lever. Let's bring this in. Let's come in here and let's take a little bit here. So here's the cocking mechanism itself. Cocking lever, pulls back, push forward, and fire the rifle. To get the magazine in, this must be pulled all the way back, and you can see that the top pin has come back, and that's what actually pushes in the pellet into the chamber, into the into the barrel at the top there. But you will see that there's another 
pin here and this is controlled by this lever which you pull back and it's spring loaded it pulls back so you've got to have both back at the same time before you can get the magazine in you let go you can't you cannot do this one-handed it is a two-handed operation to do this magazine you can see 14 shot magazine like so what we're going to do is I'm just going to get a blank magazine just so I don't uh, end up shooting something by accident so we'll take out a blank magazine so here's our blank magazine you can see the mechanism on it so to get this in and I'm going to struggle to do this basically we have to put it there pull the first lever and you can see it just can't be done it is an absolute pain in the backside so what I find I tend to do is I've got myself like so and then you pull back and pull back the second one slot the magazine in you can see the magazine's there push the magazine in and again cocking lever needs to be back and I'm trying to do this one-handed and it's not easy you can see I've really messed it up this is a terrible 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 design so I've now got the magazine totally wrong let's take the magazine drop it in and there it's clicked so you think that will be it magazines in and we're okay there and, and then the bit that makes this really difficult is this lever here has actually got two positions and if we get a little bit closer into here and have a look you can see the rear position where we pulled it back to get the magazine in rear position and then its default is down in the bottom groove but there's actually another groove and just about make it up here and if you want the magazine to cycle on each cock you must lift this and push it forward not easy uh, to remember that all the time so magazine in close take the little lever and push it forward you can see how it's gone forward its default is back a little bit it's down there but it needs to come forward so when you shoot and then you cock the magazine cycles if you don't do it that way and you have it that little lever down in the bottom and you cock it will not cycle the magazine why this has been designed like this I have no idea this is the worst part of the whole gun absolute terrible whole part but that's where it all ends that is just the only part I don't like so what else do we have with this? Well, straight away we can see we have a very, very nice, unique magazine storage. You can see this here. So there's four of them. There's room for four magazines here. And we can see that there. So magazine storage, very, very handy. So I always recommend go and buy yourself a couple more magazines so you've got nice in there. Four lots of 14 in there and you could even have one up in the chamber as well for breached ready to go so that like i said is the worst part of the whole gun and it is really annoying you cannot one hand load this um, it takes two hands you've got the gun all over the place while you're trying to do it and it's not quiet and it's fiddly it struggles it really struggles and it's very easy um, with that to if you're not careful and i'll be honest it's happened to me once is you can let a shot loose by accident or double load this so not as good as the day states where it stops you from loading up uh, two pellets at once uh, but that's what it is it's what it is uh, the rear of the gun we have a standard butt plate non movable it's a shame it'd be nice if it lifted up but you've got to remember the price point of this we're looking at a thousand pounds for this whole rifle on well, now uh, all moulded plastic all the way round. One other flaw I've just noticed and remembered with this, no safety catch whatsoever. There is no safety on this. So if you're not sure if you've got it loaded, it's, you, know, you make sure you know when you've got a pellet up in that chamber and you know the gun's alive, you make sure you know. Uh, if, if you've left it, put it down to the side and you're not sure, it's very difficult. And of course up here, you cannot see whether or not there's a pellet loaded in here and there's no double loading. Uh, checking it either uh, mechanism so it is easy to push two pallets in here if you've forgotten you know you're out shooting you've loaded you're taking an extra shot you've not actually fired it you put the gun down 
you check in on your phone or something or you check in the wildlife and then did I remember to cock it? Did I put another one up in the chamber? Did I not? It's very easy to do. Okay, so to put the bipod on, very very simple. Uh, you just undo this whole black housing, take it off and all I did was self-tap a Piccatilly rail at the bottom to fit a bipod on. Self-tapped it in there with washers, got it all in there, nice and easy, easy to do. Piccatilly rail on top, nice and big and will fit and accommodate most scopes on that as well. And as you can see it's a free floating barrel uh, through there, I think it's got about uh, it's got 12 groove barrel and I think it's 450 twists, so it is. And that brings me straight on to why I've made this video. It has a lot of flaws, this gun, a lot of flaws, but it is accurate. Um, even at, um, I think mine came rated and signed with a certificate of just under 12 foot pound, which is UK, for those that are not, that are not aware, in the UK we have to have a licence to go over 12 foot pound, but 2-2, two, two. this, this thing is accurate, seriously accurate. I am not a great shot, but I can put over 30 metres, I can put 10 rounds or 14 rounds out the magazine within half, you know, half an inch group, easy, 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 easy. In fact, I can get it a lot smaller than that as well. Yeah, you know, down into size, you know, we're talking about that sort of size there. We can get, I can get 14 shots in. Okay, so we're going to do some quick test shots. Now, I'm no brilliant shot here at all. Um, but just recreational. But we're 25 metres away shooting there, and we're going to shoot from the other side of the garden. And uh, we're going to take a look and see how it looks. So, I'm not a great shot at all, uh, I never profess to be one, I shoot maybe once every couple of months, so I'll just plink a couple of targets, as you can see from me shooting there, I'm not even resting it properly, I'm not using a bench rest or anything like that, I'm not even using the tripod, because the tripod I have on there is a little bit too long for the shots in this garden that I want, so it means me have to lift up too much, so I tend to just rest it down, yeah, yeah it's sort of semi free hand, but it's a resting shot obviously, but that's what I've done. 25 yards, just over 25 yards, 14 shots, and a couple of those I know I pulled. I pulled them off these bottom two, two or three down here, I know pulled them. And I've not shot for ages at all, but look at that, yeah. All within half an inch group. Easy half an inch group, maybe less. That's what it can do in an inexperienced hand. Okay, so we're going to go 14 shots over about 25 metres. I've also got a camera down range as well, so we can see how we're doing. So, again, to load, pull back, secondary pin, pull back and back. So hold both back at the same time, as you can see. Let it in, let it click, it's in, cock forward, and then this lever has to go to the forward position. So, we're going to take 14 shots and see how we get on. Unorthodox position, I know. So, cock and lever forward, remember to do it. The, uh, and then the secondary pin forward.
and we're back. 14 shots. I'm not a great shot, I'm moving around a little bit, I'm wobbling on this table and I'm not taking my time, so we're going to probably do another 14 as well just to see how we're doing. But not bad, I'm an amateur shot, I only shoot maybe once every couple of months, maybe fire down three or four magazines, that's it. And to be honest, I've not even checked the pressure of the gun yet, what are we on? <laughs> we're only just over 100 bar on there, so I've not even filled the gun up, that just proves the regulation's not bad, look at that. If there was drop, there you would see it, and actually that's just me side to side movements. All right, let's go again. Okay, load up. Fourteen shots. Let's try and take our time a little bit more now. Fourteen shots, twenty-five meters. That's pretty good by the looks of that. That's pretty good. <laughs> Got to start destroying the paper. <laughs> Bunch of lead in there. <laughs> you can see why the paper's getting ripped up. But uh, yeah, let's just uh, have a quick peek at that. That's pretty good. That's not bad. So here we go after our testing. Uh, you can see that uh, we've done three lots of shooting. Um, just quick rapid fire shooting. Uh, not really taking time, not even positioned properly. Three lots of 14 shots at just over 25 metres, and you can see all half inch group. And I'm not a great shot. This gun makes you a great shot. When I first shot this, I couldn't believe it. Oh, wow. I did, of course, come from a Springer, so you know, if your shooting style and everything has to be really good for that. You can just see that, that's just amazing. So I find that with a full bar pressure of uh, 250, it says up to 300, but uh, I go up to 250. Full bar 250, um, I'm getting approximately 130 to 140 irregulated shots before I start to see a drop off, and that's on 2-2. So that's, that's 140, that's 10 magazines worth, uh, 10 lots of 14 worth. Yeah, it's about right. And before I start getting any drops in anything, and uh, you, it's noticeable when you see the drops, you know, your, your pellets will their, their power obviously goes down and they'll drop down the target by a couple of inches at a time. Um, I'm finding that when I zero this rifle at uh, 25 meters, um, at 50 meters I'm going down two mil dots. Um, well, I'm dropping, you know, it depends on your scope obviously, uh, what type of scope you've got, but I'm dropping down about two inches for the for 25 meters to 50 meters, that sort of drop range. I'm on that, um, and now see that's all regularly. Fill in the magazines, easy, 14 shots. Get your pellets, like so. The cogged part, pellets in, face forward, in, slight push in, and repeat. Easiest way to find found to do this, take your magazine, put it in the centre of your hand, like so. Grab a handful of pellets. Grab a handful of pellets and just shuffle them around, around the top. Let go of the excess. Take your magazine and push them in. You may have a couple of holes that haven't been filled or a couple that have gone in upside down. And then just fill in the final part. I can load a magazine, 14 shots, like that, usually within 30 seconds or so, less than 30 seconds. And again, we'll just do it again. So we'll take a magazine, pellets, just drop some pellets over the top of it. So you can see the pellets are going over the top. Take away the waste. Have a look, just 
drop out the pallets that are not going, just reseat a couple of them that haven't fallen quite right. And we can see there, they're all loose, and now just push them down. Easy. Okay, so fill in from a dye bottle, so it takes the standard type adapter. We pull back to reveal the opening. We click in, and we're there, and then we can start to fill. Now you'll notice that as it fills, we'll bring the camera in, and we'll notice that the pressure goes up very slowly. Uh, it's deliberately supposed to do that, it doesn't rapid fill, it fills up slowly. So as it starts to fill up, I'll bring the camera in to show you how it does that. And you can make that out, but that gauge is moving extremely slowly. Which is good, because it means you can't, you know, you have to take your time, you can't totally overfill it. Now I was shooting there at just over 100 bar. So I was <laughs> almost running empty, I find around about 80 bar or so, that's when it starts to go. And there we go, and we're done. And so we just close the valve off, release the pressure. So there we go. Hopefully you like my review of the Calibre Cricket, uh, this being the 2-2 variant. I said I wanted to give you an honest owner's opinion view of this uh, rifle. Um, I said I've owned it for a year, I've done a few modifications to it, I have had zero problems with it whatsoever. Um, if you're after a ball pop in the sub thousand pound range, certainly worth taking a look at. If you can get all the one to have a shoot of it, go for it. Major disadvantages out of all of it, definitely the loading the magazines it is horrible but if you're willing to get used to that and you can live with it then it's well worth it on there what I do like about it is the rugged construction this thing is built like a tank its accuracy is amazing you've seen the shots that I've done I am not a proper shooter as you can tell but it's just the way I position myself when I'm shooting and resting the rifle on the tripod but I'm not a great shot but if I can put three lots of 14 in half inch group at over 25 yards 25 meters without even thinking about it, it is well worth it to do that. Um, I do love the magazine storage uh, on there, um, very handy, nice to keep everything all in one place on there. And for the price, yes, I think the only thing you could get better would be the FX Impact or one of the Daystate electronic uh, ball pops. But for the price on this, awesome piece of kit, I do recommend it, for definitely for beginners. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, thumbs up on there, share it with everybody else. Um, I'm going to hopefully be doing some more videos and hopefully I'm getting a hold of an ATN Digital HD2 scope on here um, to do full reviews with that and I think that should complete this awesome package. So thank you very much and uh, see you next time.